Scientists are saying to everybody, we have to accelerate our action to tackle climate change because if we don't, by the middle of this century, we could be facing a situation that we simply will not be able to cope with. Never before in the history of humanity have we been at this place where we're facing such a potential collapse of everything that we know and care about. Take a breath, because being present to what is on the planet right now is an act of courage. In our lifetime, we may see the extinction of so many incredible species. While our water is clean and runs abundantly, others have no access to clean water. Their water may be polluted, there may be none at all. They may be walking for miles. There are people living in war zones, terrified to leave their homes. There are millions of homeless refugees huddled together, uncertain of their daily existence. And while we contemplate the many possibilities of our future, there are people locked in jail cells, people tortured, people enslaved and laboring to make our clothes, grow our food, put together our computers. Our culture wants us to numb out. Our culture wants us purchasing things, distracted by the next shiny gadget. Our dominant culture even wants us to get addicted to everything that is that they offer. It seems to me that like everything is transformation, everything is changing. If I think about a transformative culture, I don't know what it looks like, but there has to be space. It is really a process of deep listening. So many people connecting and learning to deal with emotions and to really understand each other. Get in touch with the nature, get in touch with yourself and huddle together into communities that can sustain themselves. For a good hot fire, for the bed put in stuff. Mr. Worm and the Fungal Family are the compost organisms you actually can see in two of them. That's an area you got to cover it well with sawdust and leaves. Nobody can tell. So, coming to the Eco Village Design Education here in 2018, I realized that one of the main things that they somehow invited us into is to go really deep into our feelings and 
inner emotional processes and to really let go of this idea that we are alone in our fear and alone in our anger and to really see all these emotions that are sometimes seen as unwanted to see them as actually really crucial to becoming connected authentically as human beings and i actually see lots of similarities with the whole process of our digestive system and shitting things out and making compost out of it expressing things of like deep-rooted fears and vulnerabilities that hey this is based in a story and I don't need that story anymore so I can just express what is there and just let it be transformed and trust that actually by expressing it it creates a fertile ground for other things to flourish again So doing what it takes to arrive in the room, maybe in your own space for the moment. Checking in. If you want, you can let your walk reflect how it is you're really feeling. So look around for a moment. We're the ones that have chosen to spend this month together in learning to create a transformative culture. All of us have on some level committed to being part of the change we want to see in the world. We may not know how we're going to do that, but we've chosen to participate. And at a deep level, we're willing to try. And that takes courage. It takes tremendous courage to care and to love and to be present on a dying planet. What I struggle with the most is um, this feeling of freeze. We don't know if there's anything we can do about it anymore. And this, I struggle with this because then what's the point at all? And Every time I do something that I think is good or will contribute, there's this voice in my mind saying, um, ah, but it doesn't matter anyway. Notice in your own life the ways in which we've all created mechanisms for us to avoid the truth of the pain of being alive at this time. What are your methods? for dealing and coping with what's happening. Here I really feel a state of where I can be present and engage with what is happening, where different layers of my being and of my understanding of the world somehow align and come together and I can feel myself, yeah. Can you deeply forgive yourself for any of the ways in which we choose not to deal it's really hard work and not so easy to take on the self-responsibility in that sense, looking at climate change and the way that we interact as human beings on this planet. I'm definitely looking to get some grounded knowledge about what it means to, to build community, to build uh, something that can carry a group through difficult times also, like how do we solve our troubles or problems or conflicts and, and, and go on with the project so it doesn't fall apart when it gets hard. I have this quote that I live by and that's Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Nabanya Bantu and a person is a person amongst other people and it's the others that we have to consider the ones that are not like us, the ones that are different, the ones that are uh, a little bit on the edge and include, include them in the societies. So the transformative culture is somewhere where we can rethink all the things that we have just standardized and gone automatic, the money, the systems, the food, the way we use our waste, the way we build our houses and become strong cultures that are resilient. 
In a moment, we'll be moving again, and I invite you to be willing to be seen, not in what we perceive of as our strength and our glory, willing to tackle this, but in our humanness. Can we be seen in our vulnerability? Can we see and connect each other in our compassion for ourselves and our time of being alive? If I see what is happening around and I see the craziness and the sickness of that kind of culture that we created and of that we get sick ourselves and not only us but everything then it is really hard for me to not judge if people don't see the same thing that I do. We can now react to each other in the way we feel, not the way the government tells you to feel, or the, the magazine tells you to feel, or your teacher tells you to feel, or the religion tells you to feel, or your food tells you to feel. You are feeling what you have summed up in yourself and you're able to speak it out. Big challenge in my life right now is somehow to understand certain feelings I get, certain tensions, resistances, and really feel where they are coming from. The world that I live in now, the people around me, I don't, we're, we're not supporting each other in a way that makes me get out of this freeze because I don't think we are teaching ourselves and others and our children how to have actual connection. So if I don't feel safe with myself or with others around me, then I'm never gonna feel safe in this world. I'm definitely looking to express my deepest emotions and to dare to show it to other people, to to trust other people, to not take advantage of it, but really to try to feel with me. Our grief is a precious gift of our humanity. And isn't our broken heart just a testament to how much we love? Isn't feeling the grief of this time showing us how much we care? What breaks my heart is how dependent we are in our lifestyle, in what we need, our basic needs, our food, our clean water, how dependent we are on all these things upon systems that basically destroy the fertility and the beauty of our earth. That really breaks my heart, to see my own dependence on these systems, of the global food industry, of the way that we clean our water, of the way that we go to the toilet, and I see how dependent I am and the people around me, and it really, really breaks my heart. And the only way to align my soul and my heart and knowing this dependency is to design systems of local self-reliance that bring beauty and diversity and life into the world. And I want to build these systems and I want to make them accessible to everybody and to teach about them. So we're here together with the sentence of creating a transformative culture. And the interesting thing is that nobody really knows what is the next culture or what is really the next step. It's more about this process of creating a culture that can adapt and that can transform itself based on what is needed and based on what is true and authentic. So it's not anymore this kind of top-down things that are imposed upon us in frameworks also of feeling fearful, what happens when I don't conform to the culture. It becomes to like, hey, what is really true inside myself? And adding that to this process of creating that which 
which nurtures us and which connects us and which allows us to build something new that is needed. When I started out to be interested in community and how to live um, or how to find that new way to live on Earth for all of us. I was still an engineer. I was working uh, in the robotics industry, um, building robots for pipeline inspections, so oil industry. And at that point I just decided that doesn't make enough sense, although it was a lot of fun and I'm still like, I like engineering. I feel it is important that more young people care about what is going on not in a way of blaming the others but really looking how is that system that I'm fighting against is alive within myself how am I enacting and living that system every day so to activate young people and to also not leave them there but to get them connected and get them involved into things like organizations or projects that are already happening or founding their own ones and finding like-minded people. And the question is how to get that info, like that message out that young people could get in touch. What I'm looking for here concretely is to have those actions or have people that are interested in networking, social media, being playful, arts um, and anything else that you can think of in order to go forward and get people to care about the planet. I'd like to share and hopefully also work on with you is the place where I live. It's already a place where people come and are inspired by the way we, we deal with each other, the, the way we have composting toilets and gardens and, and how we build our houses or what we built already. And there's a lot of potential that is not used. This is me right now. This is a fish tank. And these are tourists. What we want to do is get these fish out and invite people to bring their magic to the Ubuntu cultural village. The culture includes generations, includes the young ones, includes the old ones, includes the ones that are other, other colors, other cultures. So to do a transformation in a culture, you don't just uh, pick out of the youth who would like to move into a commune and uh, live happily ever after, which is beautiful. But for me, it's like diversity training. It's like being able to withstand the storms. It's like being able to cover all grounds. You know, you might have the crazy uncle or the, the annoying aunt and be able to withstand those guys in yourself as well, because you're not going to be the nicest person every day either. People were aware around me of, of, yeah, the environment is important and we need to separate plastics. And but still, in this in this space of of a system that I I didn't I had the experience of not functioning in anymore. Um, so I was just really longing for people that feel the same and also really want to do the same. Like it's not just feeling the same; it also has to be okay. Now we're actually going to do it, and that's what I really feel here. And what always interested me was how are individual people growing, how are teams working together, and how are organizations to be structured so that it can help individuals and teams to work together and to grow. I feel like everyone is looking for that, for contact, for connection, for being seen, for the sense of belonging, but something is holding us back and, and I don't know what it is. I mean fear, I would say. Fear from being seen and rejected and hurt and maybe yeah, fear of not being enough and then therefore not be loved maybe. 
But then also, yeah, why, why is it um, so hard to get in contact with yourself even? Maybe it's out of the same reasons. For me, that's really also this whole um, transformative culture idea. It's really about this, this contact with the unknown and to kind of be with yourself in this contact and then grow into the unknown and overcome this fear. The inner growth we are going through as individuals, we bring this to the center to become part of the collective and to be honored and supported by the collective on different levels. It's like very physical, so you go in the center very physical, you really feel your body. And that's also what I would like to ask you for, really to speak from your physical body. And then you feel, woo, it's, it's a high energy here, it's like a candle to be in the center. And then also you will feel your emotional body, so you speak also from your emotional body. And maybe there are thoughts, and you speak about your thoughts, and then you come back to your, to your physical and to your emotional body, and you, and you use the space to move. And then when you had your time in the center, you go out, and then there's a time where the people from outside can give their feedback if the person in the center would like to have it. And the feedback is always a support for the person. I'm still a little bit struggling with how to get what I know from being in nature a lot. Like my work at the moment is very much in nature with people or all by myself, really, really to learn what it means to become like indigenous again here, like to really connect to the plants and the land and to bring that to the people. Sometimes I really feel disconnected because I'm not able to make people experience what I experience maybe or, or yeah, I mean there's moments where I really feel here like starting to, to feel in my heart that it's possible to, to connect that and there's many people open for it. And then there's moments where I really kind of also feel a little bit of despair of because I in these moments when I'm out when I'm out there and deeply connected, I feel like this is really, really important. Somehow there's something very magical about this process. It feels really good to bring people together and to explore what is possible and be in a really authentic way with ourselves, to relate to each other in a way that we can be really vulnerable also. It just needs to get out and it needs to be loved and it needs to have some air and some time and it can compost. Wow. Thank you for giving me this gift of your presence. I somehow created myself this ritual. It has to do with the deepest thing I ever love, which has to do with a dream about myself and with a dream for a dare to take this into my mouth, but for the world and for the society itself, which the EDE is part of. And Klarisek is part of. When I started to dream to build a community, I started to dream it for do it for my children, because I, I wanted to have children and have a family, but I knew I will never have it in a city somewhere in a box or outside of a village having it in a box. I would not. I was very clear. I was asking myself, what does it take for me to feel safe in a space? And I think that's not the thing to only focus on. Because even with my closest family or friends, I sometimes don't feel safe and that's okay. The question is, do I feel safe in myself? Can I give myself that safety and what would that need? One that really struck me was uh, 
the realization how important sisterhood is and how so many interactions are based on the relationship that I have towards women. Like, for example, jealousy. I would not need to fear if I would truly love and see the light of my sister. How come that, that we diminish our lights when we could support each other in order to shine? And how strong would that be? Allow yourself to find a way through all the other companions without touching anybody, without looking at anybody. Just try to find your way. Let us come to micro. And this micro movement is a movement which allows you really to come inside. Allow just what is there right now. And from there, slowly, slowly open your eyes and look out, out of your own circle and see there are other circles around. And in, within these other circles, there is also movement. Energetically, go back to your own system. So I am in physical contact with my own system. And be aware if you have to move and your hands are moving because it's disturbing the person who is laying there. Try it out whenever you are ready for it. It doesn't work to keep it all in and to try and fix your own emotions and everything on your own um, because I can be very, I mean, yeah, very individualistic in thinking that I have to be successful on my own or be uh, super organized on my own or, you know, take care of a lot of stuff alone. And I do that here as well. If I'm going through something, I fight with myself for one or two days to, to try and suppress it and, and close myself off. And then the aha moment is when um, either I realize that I have to ask for help or somebody comes to me because we're with such a beautiful group here that people see each other. And then the aha moment is that then I can instantly feel this energy start to flow and then it doesn't make any sense to do it alone. I mean, some things you have to do alone, you have to be self-responsible, but it's through this connection that you get to move again. Conflict is not a thing that is out there. It's something that's in here. And this means that uh, the conflict takes place within the human neurobiological system. So it's a specific experience. And for many of us, it's an experience that we don't necessarily like. And I feel one thing that has been really important in my work is that we don't start with the other. It's like the, the person or the situation that we, we make responsible for feeling how we feel. This means like we really take more ownership of how we actually experience a conflict. It usually has not so much as we think to do with the other person and much more as we would like to acknowledge with ourselves. At the beginning, when I first saw him, somehow he, he triggered a lot in me and him sitting there, there was so much resistance. And then um, I slowly started to understand what he really does. And what I find happens is when we own more our own process, is that by becoming more clear within ourselves, we restore a certain response flexibility. So when I find out more why I feel so uncomfortable in a situation with you, and if I take proper care of that, then I can start to see you in your situation and where you are. This doesn't mean that I need to agree with you, that's a different question. But I have more flexibility in my response and there's more options available to me. 
And this is usually when people in conflict situations start, sometimes even out of themselves, to come up with very creative solutions. The times are urgent, you must slow down. I think what, what fascinates me with the work of Daniel is that it, it moves into a place that is unknown, that we have no words for it, and therefore it's not really content that you learn with him, but it's an embodied experience. And this to feel what it means like to, to host yourself. of this is about consciousness, the consciousness that we weave through all these intelligences. Up here on the top, these are big forces that are kind of weighing down on us on some level. The global economy, you know, we have to deal with money. It, it's weighing on us. The worldview and our politics. And the nice thing about these two things is they're human created. They can be human undone. But they can only be undone if we have the imagination to undo them. You know, it's really hard for people to think outside of capitalism, to think outside of a world with money. And it would only be if our consciousness is alive and activated that we would have what it takes to deal with these, these intense, like for me right now, the politics in the United States are absolutely insane. But down here, this earth stuff, the ecology and the global food, that too can change with our energy. We're on it. It's not bearing down on us, we're bearing down on it. We have a whole lot of power there too, but, but until you realize that this power is not preventing you from this power, then, and that you have the complete capacity in yourself to unite with people and to be present to what is and wake up to a consciousness that can invite this new, Something that really touched me was in the closing celebration on Saturday, this angel's walk, where like everyone walked through this alley of, of all the people. And uh, yeah, that was very touching for me to, to be present there, but also to walk through the, this alley and look everyone in, in the eyes. That was. Ooh. Yeah. There was somehow a moment of deep connection for me. How do I integrate really what I've learned here and how do I don't forget? It's again about space. It's like give myself the space to be aware because it's so connected to your heart and to what you have embodied. I feel if I cleaned up within, it's much more cleaned up without. So it changes everything. The awareness that I bring towards myself and towards my interactions. It's again like how, how important it is to always connect to my resources the creativity that I feel that is needed, not to get lost in things that are happening. Every lesson wasn't a lesson, it was a transformative coaching session. People have been transformed.